which organization are you representing here? I'm with WWF. Okay. Could you show us your badges as well? So, uh, I'm a student at Stockholm University. Okay. And I'm also working as a junior rapporteur okay. during the week. And I'm also one of the junior rapporteurs, uh, but I study in Uppsala University. Okay, good. So, uh, so John, why are you here? I, I got a cheap ticket. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm here uh, to talk about how climate change is affecting freshwater resources and ecosystems. Okay. And I'm here to learn more about the water sector and also to report on the issues concerning water and climate change. Okay. And I'm going to have to second Sarah on that <laughs> and also learn a lot more about okay. this. Uh, yeah, good. Sector. Also to show off your pores. <laughs> of course. That's why I'm in the queue. Yeah, yes. right. So, John, how, how do you think climate change is affecting the freshwater resources in your mind? Uh, I travel the world. I fly maybe three, four hundred thousand kilometers every year. Mm -hmm. and. Uh, uh, I see um, all over the planet uh, uh, changes that, uh, that are, are occurring as a result of climate change. And some of them are small, um, that there may be more frequent storms or more frequent droughts and floods, but uh, some of them are really dramatic and they're really impacting the, the way that people live. So the city of Shanghai, for instance, is having problems with a reliable drinking water supply. A lot of people would also say that uh, it's very difficult to quantify some of these things and mm -hmm. uh, how do you go about disproving that or even how do you how do you use data to prove this that this is happening? Well, actually what, uh, I'm, a, I'm a scientist by training okay. and one of the things that I think uh, is, a, is a very convincing uh, piece of evidence for me is that we are seeing some kinds of changes and impacts now that are completely unprecedented uh, on a scale of thousands or tens of thousands of years. So for instance, uh, right now, uh, up in the Tibetan Plateau, which is uh, it's called the roof of the world, um, it's an average elevation of around four or five thousand meters, uh, you, you're seeing uh, uh, yak herders who've lived there for four or five thousand years with a fairly similar livelihood over that period of time as pastoral nomads, that they uh, the grasslands are just disappearing as a, as a result of changes in the precipitation patterns and, and winter warming. Okay. So it, they're, they're, this ancient livelihood is basically disappearing um, uh, in the, the space of a few decades. Right. I mean, uh, what happened in Ladakh as well was similar. Yeah, exactly. And what I've been told that there's no living memory of what a cloud burst is in, in Ladakh. Yeah. Which is like scary, right? They don't have a word for a cloud burst. Yeah, no, th that's exactly true. So you, uh, if you talk, I, I was camping uh, with herders basically for two weeks on the Tibetan Plateau in July of this year, and uh, and we would find the the oldest herders in an area. Um, they might be 70, 80 years old, and they they they'd say oh, we've never seen impacts like this in, right. in our lifespan, and that's really disturbing. There's there's no meteorological record that that's uh, significant for that area, but. Over that 70-year period, there's no memory of it, and but we can we can infer indirectly because of this ancient livelihood that that it probably has never happened over at least a four or five thousand-year period. Okay. I think something that I've heard already this first couple of days is uh, uh, what kind of language to use and like how you communicate, and I think especially in the water sector, it's. Um, th there are many ways to communicate the problems that doesn't need to be on the uh, policy and climate change uh, height, so to speak. It, it can be quite, quite simply put in just that we are running out of water and, uh, and, and things that people can relate to much better than that the whole world and the atmosphere is changing. It's like you can't really grasp that and then you... The, that makes it more difficult to find solutions. So I think if you keep it on, an, on a practical level, it's easier to find solutions.